place now all time. time. to a first down so smiling hack something to smile about you just passed one of the cfl legends you mentioned mentioned 32 yards away and he throws a 45 yard pass to johnny forzani and moves into eighth place all time and there is tom clements at three thirty nine thousand forty one yards one of the greatest plays ever was of course performed by tom clements to tony gabriel to win a great cup for the ottawa rough riders later played with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers as well and won a great cup. You just lost a whole bunch of Saskatchewan Rough Rider fans. Oh, oh, you know, that. Sorry about that. <laughs> Hand off inside. You know, it's second down in short yardage. You know, Ryder, walk, watching Drew Tate back after they just released Michael Bishop and Drew Tate is now healthy again. And back at that number two spot, he'll play short yardage, had the shoulder issue and is now back in the roster that you were able to release bishop because of it sonopoli will still be the holder on field goals first down in 10. rosani at the top of your screen henry burris reynolds stays into block burris time far sideline Broken route there, and I don't think Johnny Forzani could see it in the sun. Yeah, he couldn't see it. Uh, he he brought, he's looking at it right now. He's saying, hey. I need a visor. <laughs> Where are my shades? He, he turned around and could not find the football. I mean, that's what he's looking at as he turns around. And if the ball is hidden in there somewhere, he has no shot. It's like an outfielder in baseball that loses it in the sun, and it, it kind of he stood there, just well, there whistled right by him. Did he's looking the that? opposite direction. You couldn't see it. Either. Either. <laughs> That's high depth. First incompletion for Burris after going six for six. Second and ten. Deep drop, flinging it out. Jabari Walker, did he make that catch? Yes, he did. It's a touchdown. Lost his lid. Made the grab. The Cavs are protesting. Let's take a look to see if there might be a challenge. What do you think, Suits? Well, we, we'd have to take a look and see whether or not he trapped it, but I don't know what's better if he did catch it, the catch or the throw, because pressure in the face of Henry Burris, he almost flicked it with his wrist, loses his helmet at the other end. Now, did he pin it against the turf? Wow. Now, they're going to line up for that extra point, but... Not seen. There is the challenge flag at the 30th yard line. So we will see if that will hold up. They'll take it back to the command center. Our referee tonight is Murray Clark. Tom Higgins, director of officiating, is here tonight, so not in the command center. This all is hinging on Jabari Arthur's potential first touchdown of his career. And he'll have to Hamilton wait. Hamilton is challenging the ruling on the field. The completed pass for a touchdown. We will review the play. And take one more look at this, but you know, when I saw that replay, it looked like he may have pinned that ball against the turf. And I'm just talking about the end of the football here. He has it in his hands there. Now, did the question there is, did he get his arm or hand underneath it and it wasn't the ball that touched? But his hand or arm that touched, ball turns, top of the football. I think the top of the football, I think the top of the football touched the ground. If you, if you back that up and freeze it, right there. And, and that, I think that ball, the end of that football touched the ground and this is coming back. Because you cannot, you've got to survive contact as spectacular as that was. That was spectacular. After review, Here it is. pass is incomplete. Incomplete. Third down. Well, Jabari Arthur's going to have to wait for his first touchdown. He thought he had it. Come on, come on. But it will not count. Well, it was so spectacular from both ends. I mean, first of all, to go completely horizontal like Jabari Arthur had to do to just get his hands on that ball, let alone catch it, and then make it that close. But a good challenge by Marcel Belfe. He saw something, took a look, and sure enough, the tip of that football touched the ground. Often, they'll get the call from upstairs. And, you know, you 
have to wait for the replay for the spotters and the coaches upstairs to get it. To be able to see it right away like that, you're right, an excellent challenge. And a pair it is from the 35-yard line to restore a seven-point lead. Splits the uprights. Successful. And he's back four for five last night or last week. Ten of 14 on the season. 10-3 Stampeders. Action for week seven Thursday as the Eskimos travel to Montreal to take on the Alouettes. Live coverage begins at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on TSN, TSN Mobile TV. And the Alouettes winning against Toronto the other night. The Eskimos losing last night in Swaggerville in Winnipeg. And Jabari Arthur still thinks he made that catch. Uh, there was a correct call. Correct call was made by the officials. A good challenge from Marcel Belfe. And I know that Jabari Arthur is upset, but the right call was made. Hamilton O back to work. Left. Looking for Aaron Kelly. And he has his fourth catch of the season on the far sideline. 26-yard pickup. A lot of big play throws so far from the Tiger Cats. Yeah, they're going down the field, pushing the ball. That was a corner out to the wide field, so it gave Aaron Kelly from Clemson all kinds of room to run his corner. And, and he gets that, that outside leverage on Keon Raymond. Nice throw and catch. Aaron Kelly getting a chance to play because Maurice Mann is not quite ready. Tiger Cats with some freak injuries. His heel on the door. And an interference call coming here. A late flag. Land looking in on a slant pattern, and the Stampeders flagged, it looks like, for illegal contact interference here. We may see a few more of these slants. Prior to the pass being thrown, illegal contact on a receiver, Calgary number 25. 10 yard penalty, first down. Because of the style of defense that Calgary plays in their secondary and they play up and physical and in your face. A couple of options for receivers with that style of defense is this kind of play, a slant to the inside, trying to get inside leverage, or a straight goal run, fade run. Chris Jones, the defense coordinator, is going to play bump and run. That's to get in your kitchen. Yes, he does. Back goes pops and pants. Chris Williams, haven't seen much of that from this prized rookie so far. You talked about Mo Mann being out again. He cut the back of his heel on the back of a door at Iverwind Stadium and has been out for a few games now and is starting to get himself back into shape. No Arlan Bruce, so you have this troika of first-year receivers under Kevin Glenn tonight. Well, and what's interesting about it and why Arlan Bruce is now a BC Lion, or one of the reasons is that a guy like Mark Quay McCandler can't get on the, in the lineup. I mean, that's the type of depth they all of a sudden have and some good young talent. That says something. McDaniel scratched here tonight down the sideline and trying to lay out for it and unable to make the catch. But Kari Grant, and there is another flag yeah. down at the four-yard line. And it'll be pass interference, and, and it's a good call. I watched that play from start to finish. Saw Bakari Grant heading down the rail, and it was a couple of tucks. Forward pass interference. Calgary number 29. Ball spotted at the point of the foul. First down. Former cat Jeff Tisdale, the guilty culprit. One on one. Right at the top, you see that aggressive man. Now, I think they're going to let the first one go right there, but there was another one. And you could see that second pull lasted about five yards in the go route right down the rail. And that's going to get called. His jersey over top of his shoulder pad, 31 yards. Cats sniffing the end zone down. Two interference calls and almost a pickoff. Looking for Williams. And right there is Brandon Isaac dropping back in coverage. Brandon Isaac's versatility allows the Calgary Stampeders to do this. He often will line up at the linebacker spot. He go, can run on the blitz. He can cover a receiver out of the backfield. And occasionally, they'll roll him back to the middle, free him up, and let him go to the football. And that's just great range for Brandon Isaac. Hamilton has done pretty well in the red zone this season. 11 for 15 for touchdowns. 
Guess who? Dave Stella. What a start to his season. He has now matched his career total for a season, which was last year, his sixth touchdown in only his sixth game this year. Well, he came in in a three-way tie for the lead in touchdowns, and that's just not receiving touchdowns. That's also, that's overall touchdowns. And he is money. I mean, this guy is make, makes the clutch catch, whether it be for a first down, whether it be for a touchdown. Dave Stalla makes the catch that this team needs. That's what I'm talking about. Chris, breakout year last year. That's what he's talking about. Last year was a breakout, and he's already doing better than last year's breakout. This is a break, breakout. Break, break, breakout. 10 10 game. Catch the ball better than you can tell a good joke. <laughs> no question. Watch these two in tandem. This is Chris Williams and there's Dave Stalla. One's going to come in and almost pick for Stalla to sit down in the hole right behind him. Two receivers working in tandem together in that four receiver package to the wide side of the field. Stalla opens up because Chris Williams takes coverage with him. Stalla, though, nine, 21 catches, seven second down conversions, six touchdowns out of those 21. So a nice play in tandem, finish the drive. Hey, babe, for you. I think he should keep he his day job and not go into the stand-up comic routine because... Unless he brought a football it? and did celebrations yeah, because he's good at that. Sack, right, maybe. Joke? But what, no, wait I no, score. no more, no more no jokes. jokes no more. Thank you. That no one, more. Thank you. The, the one with the, the bear with no teeth. A gummy bear. Yeah. Okay. No. Yeah. No thanks. more. Thanks for that. Knock on. <laughs> Henry Burris. Back at the helm. Minute and a half to go. Next quarter for his pump fake. Out back. Nicely done. Knocked out of bounds. Was Rombie Bryant. Again, Burris had a lot of time to throw the football. Take a look at this and see if Romney Bryant got that foot down or was he just pushed right out of bounds? I don't think he was even pushed, and that right foot touches the white stripe. So that's another good call by the officials. Been on top of it in this game tonight. Thought the chemistry between Romney Bryant and Henry Burris was very good last week in Saskatchewan. He had five catches for 37 yards. That's a personal best for catches for him on the season. Took a hellacious hit last week as well for Tristan Jackson. Burris on his back foot. What a throw. Landon Talley makes the catch. Talley playing in place of the injured Kenyon Rambo. Was that ever a big hit? That was the big hit of not just this year. It was Tristan Jackson. It was in Saskatchewan. And you're going to follow Ron B. Bryant all the way across the field. Oh, man. Hung on to the football, got the first down, killed some more time on the clock, and got Calgary Stampeders a victory. And that's the first thing that John Hutnagel talked to the team about after the game. Well, John Hupnagel talked about it, and so did the guy who threw him the football. Could not believe that Romby Bryant caught the ball and got back to the huddle. Romney's a true warrior. He got up, you know, came off the field. When he got to the sideline, he apologized. Sorry, Huff, I should have got up on my own steam and gotten off the field. And uh, that just shows you the type of warrior he is. And even though he's sitting there hurt and, you know, trying to get his breath back, he's still thinking about the team. So uh, kudos to Romney. <laughs> and when I heard that, <laughs> honestly, I, I just, Calgary, I was shaking my head saying, wait a minute, he just gets rocked like that. And his first thought when he got up was, oh, I don't want to waste any time here because we're trying to, I, I got to get off the field. I don't want to give Saskatchewan a timeout, an injury timeout. So he goes back and apologizes for making the catch, getting the first down, and getting hit the way he apologizes to his teammates. You Amazing. Ever, you ever seen that show, Wipeout? Yeah. <laughs> that was like, you know, one of those people like running into one of those. I, I'm a fan, by the yeah, way. Yeah, <laughs> but, that, but guess what? In Wipeout, you know, you're not carrying a football. Oh, man. And you're not you're not getting hit by a guy with a helmet. And Romby Bryant got wiped out but was able to hang on. Good on him. As big a hit I've seen in the last five years. Second and eight now. Stamps took a timeout. Final play, opening quarter. Far sideline in the sunshine again.
again, and once again looking for Landon Tally. The tally after one quarter. Stampeders 10, Ticats 10, and McMahon standing. Two teams that came into week number six sharing second place in their respective conferences and also the same record three and two have had up and down starts and giving us what we kind of expected a close football game it really is the calgary stampeders with their passing yards you see henry burris moves into eighth place passing tom clements in that first quarter passing numbers good for henry burris at about 67 percent both these teams though rod need to get their running games going the number's low in the first quarter in the run game. Especially Avon Colburn for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Yes. One of the reasons that he went to Hamilton and the Tiger Cats kind of salivated getting number 22 is the fact that they could establish a running game with one of the best in the game. I know we talk about it a lot and how important that balance is, but it, it is, especially with Colburn, who had a big game. He had over 100 yards of all of yards from scrimmage against his former team, the Montreal Alouettes, a week ago. So his involvement is important. I know it's tempting, though, for Kevin Glenn with Calgary playing so much in your face, bump and run coverage. They want to try and make the big play behind that. Burke Dales, who leads the CFL in punting average. Pretty good kick inside the 10-yard line. They're going to spot it around the 6 or 7-yard line. And Burke Dales, a 52-yard boot. And Perfect. the Stampeders also will have the wind in this quarter before halftime yeah, on field. The wind, they've just, because of that nice kick, I mean, almost perfect kick, Kevin Glenn backed up in the shadow of his goal post. He's got about 50%. And, and sometimes against Calgary, against this style of D, your, your offensive numbers may not look that great, but it's about making those big plays, a couple of big plays behind that press coverage. But again, running game important to get Avon Coburn involved. Especially down in this end of the field. Twin backs for Glenn. And Avon Colburn. It's a nice block from Darcy Brown, which springs him off the right side, and it looks like he will move the sticks. He does. It's a first down. Good play call. Well, on cue. I guess, you know, that's that's the idea. You, and I know that Kahari Jones, the offensive coordinator, would have thought of that first quarter, decided, okay, yep, yeah, one guy we're forgetting is 22. Nice move in the open field there for Avon Coburn. A little shake and bake. That's what he is capable of. Sure. So far this season, averaging 5.2 yards per carry. They give him the rock again. Over half the first down yardage. Picks up seven yards. It'll be second down and three. The other thing for against playing Calgary, when you're playing Calgary offensively, the running game even can become more important. And the reason I say that is because when the secondary is up and press man to man, that means that you can run them off. They're going to have their back to the line of scrimmage. They're back to the play. So if you hand the ball off and Avon Coburn can get into that second layer, get behind the linebacking core, the DBs can't help. They're running it. With their receiver. Will they go to the ground here? They'll go to the air on second and three. To the air it is. Glenn, the slant pattern, and uh, tumbling over the 42 yard line is Aaron Kelly for his second catch. 18 yard pickup, former Clemson Tiger. You're gonna Big body. You're going to say slant pattern a bunch, and, uh, Rod, and that's because when you're playing against that press, look at it, look it up. You can either go straight down the field, try and do a swim move, and go right down the hash marks, or you can try and get inside quickly and run the slant. And we, we just talked about we're going to see a ton of that tonight from Hamilton. Cats went with some size as well. Two of their freshman receivers, and Kelly 6'5", and Bakari Grant 6'4", something they've been missing the last couple of seasons. Glenn pocket sideline and unable to come under it is Kelly watched closely by Keon Raymond and you know I had a good conversation last week with Jeff Tisdale a former Hamilton Tiger Cat now playing on the corner for Brandon Browner and he said we like that part about press I know there are some people will say that well if you can just run the slant all game well why do they do it why do you press if you can just run that play and complete it every play well Tisdale told me I'd rather dictate to the receiver what he's going to run. So I know now it's either a goal run just, or a slant. He can't run the curls and the digs and things because it takes too long to get off the, ball, off the ball, off the line of scrimmage. Makes sense. Second down and 10. Deep drop. Kevin Glenn had to retreat quickly and 
They were trying to get Avon Coburn out under cover for a little dump pass, but it didn't work. It didn't work because Devon Claybrooks tackled him, and Avon Coburn can't believe it. And, you know, sometimes this one slips by the officials because it's kind of right there in the mesh. There's offensive linemen, bodies flying everywhere. Devon Claybrooks just tackled Avon Coburn from behind. He was not available to Kevin Glenn. The guy they call Biscuit, Devon Claybrooks. Justin Medlock. Bouncing punt down to Taylor, had nowhere to go inside the 23-yard line. 44-yard kick, no return, 10-10 game. Burris back to work in a flash.